Best-selling author John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning. Also, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matthew Harvey. Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. Right, so the question is, uh, in regards to the presidential debate, which is now two nights uh, in our past, uh, one, I ask you both this question, did you watch any part of it? Uh, and if so, how much, Mr. Gilstrap? I watched probably half of it and then... till about 10? Yeah, and I went to bed. <laughs> All right, and Mr. Harvey? I think I watched, I, I did watch uh, as much as possible before I fell asleep. So I would say probably 80. 80%? 80%, I would think. I watched till a little I bit past. I missed the closing past, argument. T- I missed that too. I watched yeah. a little bit past 10, and then I had to turn in because the 320 alarm clock rules my world. It dominates everything that I do during the course of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so staying up too late just is not, I was pressing it as far as I could go. And uh, my, I'll give you my impressions first before before you folks go. Uh, I thought the handshake in the beginning was awkward. I, I don't, with all that's been said between the two of them, I don't think they wanted to shake hands, but they did it out of, out of a kind of a look of what they were supposed to do. Uh, she kind of a, hesitantly approached Donald Trump about a handshake and then kind of went all the way through and then... She she kind of said her name like she was introducing herself, Kamala Harris, like he didn't know who she was. Yes. You know? Well, they've never met before. No, but they... It was clearly staged on her part. It, something was going on yeah. there. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's right. just, it was clearly, that was... Well, it was awkward. And she was the yeah. one to cross the center line. I mean, right. She went to him. She went to him. It, it, it was awkward, though. Uh, and then as the debate began, or the, the statements began, I thought she was very nervous at first. You could hear, I always listen for dry mouth, mm-hmm. right, as a person who does a lot of public speaking both of you you can kind of pick that up if a person's mouth is dry you know that they're nervous and that would have to be if you're someone who's doing this for the first time on a stage like that you'd have to be nervous no matter how much public speaking you've done but then i think it took her maybe 10 minutes to kind of get rolling and then i thought she did pretty well at that point going forward based on what she wanted to do uh president trump uh, I like to watch facial expressions because I think those are pretty s- hardwired and staged as well. And he just poker faced it almost for the first half hour. There was no change in his facial expressions. She had a variety of facial expressions while he was talking that were interesting. Uh, but the, but the, as the hour went by, the predominant thought that stuck in my head before I went to bed was that nobody answers the question that's being asked of them. And I've talked to some people over the last 40, 36 hours since that debate, whether you're a Trump supporter or a Harris supporter, the responses have been the same, which is I would have liked to have heard them answer the questions that were asked of them. So if if you're deciding, if you're an undecided, and maybe you're in one of those seven states, right? And those, those seven states really boil down to some counties within the states. And if you're one of those voters and you and you wanted to hear Harris's response to the border, you didn't get it. And if, if you were in one of those states and you wanted to hear Trump's response on a national abortion ban, you didn't really get it, right? And I think these are these are heavily consulted people. I'm not sure how much Trump listens to consultants. I'm sure that everybody else pretty much does in the political world. But you know this this is one of those things that's covered, which is never answer the question that's asked, steer it the way you want it to go. But as a voter, it annoys the living hell out of me. And when I talk to others and I hear clips that are played on the radio or see them on the TV news, it's similarly true, which is I would have liked to have heard them ask answer the question that was asked. And I don't think you got that on Tuesday night, John. Well, I would agree, but I don't. I don't think you ever do in in these debates. Uh, I thought it was a disaster for Trump. I, I, How I, so? He rose to every bit of bait that was thrown <laughs> to him. And that, um, that's been commented on, yeah. Well, I mean, I I forget the context that that. Uh, uh, Kamala threw out something Crowd about size. people, people, yes, people something leaving like his his uh, rallies early, bored, and and then there was some other substantive thing that was was built into into her statement, and he went right to you know my my rallies are the biggest and and the best. Uh, that was by design, obviously. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. She pulled that it off. was there. 
her her strategy, I believe, I don't know this obviously, but I think the strategy was to get under his skin and mm-hmm. make him mad. That's why they wanted the live mics. Yes, and it it worked. And when he got rattled, uh, he became inarticulate and he had a hard time arguing the points he was trying to make, whether it was the um, good people on both sides in Charlottesville it, or the, you know, there were a lot of misstatements or lies. I hate to say lie since Ashley just left. It's a pejorative. You know, I don't want to be that. But um, he got so tongue tied that it was, um, I just thought it was, he did not come off well. Does it change votes? No. I, I think dedicated Trump voters or dedicated Trump voters and dedicated Kamala voters or de- dedicated Kamala voters. I found the camera work just annoying. The 60 minute close up of, well, Trump was just dour, you know, just, mm-hmm. just, and she was cartoonish. I mean, the, the <laughs> facial expression was really strange to watch her. It was. Um, in fact, that would, that would make a very entertaining animated piece just of, of her various uh, expressions. Overall, I thought it was bad theater. And that's one of the reasons I went to bed. I just got tired of it. Mm-hmm. It was, and, and, for, and there was zero substance. Matt Harvey. Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think it was a disaster for Trump. I, th- I I think actually Trump did really well the first twenty thirty minutes, and was was getting his messaging out. He missed a couple of great opportunities to really put it on her. Um, she didn't collapse, and you know that was that was that was huge for her. If mm-hmm. you if you support her, you saw that she had the tenacity to stand in there with somebody who's. <laughs> Who's a match? Well, I don't know if he's matchful, but he's a powerful well, debater. And he I think won't. it was his seventh. They said seventh presidential yeah. debate. And and you know that's that's how he rose to prominence. I think and and a field of thirteen candidates yeah. or eighteen, and, I think at one point. And you know, in your our last debate, you saw Joe Biden just terrible take himself out right yeah. with with uh, he was exposed. So she certainly had a, a good strategy. Um, I think as it went on, he. Uh, you know, it can't be said that that the moderators and I wasn't watching for this, but but having thought about it after I've heard people talk about it was how they were uh, kind of slanted towards her and you know fact checking him. Uh, but ask it just the the type of questions that they were asking him. I assure you, he felt like it was three on one. And he, he complained of that afterward. Yes. And, and it was clear that that, that was evident, uh, whether it was true or not. And, not. and I it appeared it was, at least. Did moderator. you did you perceive a bias? I did. I did. Definitely. And, and, you know, I'm not saying Trump doesn't. He kind of brings it on himself. He does. And I'm not saying it's fair, but I'm saying they know that he he's not going to pass up a talking point or he's not going to push back when challenged on something. And that's just as good ratings for them. Mm hmm. So, you know, if they wanted ratings, they want to see him go unhinged, that's what they do. They get him wound up, and maybe that invites a little bit of of, of, of attacks. But he's not he, – you know, he's going to push right back on the moderators and whoever else is standing there. So, um, you know, that's good or bad. Good or bad. I, I thought you're, – you're right about the fact-checking. You heard one statement about people leave your rallies bored – an, ex- an exhausted or, or whatever it was I, I, there's no proof of that <laughs> you know but he, as you said he calls a lot of this upon himself and devolving into the but illegal immigrants back. illegal immigrants are eating cats and dogs in ohio i, I mean i'm watching that and i'm <laughs> Oh, this, seriously, why would you need to pull that out? Stay on the border. Yeah. Why are you getting distracted by by Ill, by what's being tweeted on X? Pe- people are eating dogs and illegal immigrants are storming into the country and eating dogs and cats in in Ohio, in Springfield, Ohio. And, and that doesn't we're, appear that, to be true. We're going to bring that up in a presidential debate when there's such such a an array of important issues that we should be discussing, and he should have been hammering well, her on the border er, for 90 minutes. Yeah. He should have just kept everything she said. He should have come back with border, border, Is, border. Isn't 60, what was it, 60,000 residents in, 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 in Springfield and 20,000 yes. immigrants have... have that's Haitian the, immigrants. That's the story. Yeah. If you don't need it to... to hang any decorations on that tree mm-hmm. that's 
one third. <laughs> and early, earlier that day, I was I was driving, I was listening to the radio, and there was that was the story was Springfield, Ohio was being hammered pretty hard, and it's hard to see this on the radio, but there was apparently body cam uh, imagery of this lady eating a cat, and um, but that was somewhere else. That that was part of that story. It was not. That was someplace else. That, anyway, that's what I heard. So anyway, so it was that was hot news that day. But classic Trump, he doesn't root the story mm -hmm. before he tells the story. Just blurts it out. He just blurts it out, and then he says, "Well, I I saw it on television." Well, you know that's really not a strong argument, especially at, at that level. But no. but these are never really debates. I mean, you you go in a courtroom, and yeah, I've been a long time since I was a, a debater. But you you establish the premise, you develop the argument, and then you come to the conclusion. And it doesn't have to take a long time, but you just don't throw out a fact and and let it go. And and when your opponent says something outrageous. You, you do the same thing where the moderators would say, and I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the specifics of the abortion or anything else, but they say no state allows um, late term abortion, whatever it was that, that they said. He, yeah, the claim was that babies are being born and then we're determining whether to keep them alive or not after birth. Right. Something to that effect. So it, if if the argument is that a a an eight month abortion is a potentially viable baby that's being aborted then you know th then make that argument it's not it, that's different than going into the nursery and and killing a baby mm -hmm. but nobody makes that argument so they just kind of let these truthy non-truths get thrown about and it, it just really frustrates me it happens on both sides and nobody develops their argument i would like to see if, we, if you can't get a debate format where somebody actually answers the question that's asked, then I would like to see the current format abandoned completely and just have two candidates stand there. Okay, you've got two to three minutes. Start riffing. What's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? What are the issues that you want to bring up right now? And then you go. And then when they're done, you get your answer. And then you get to go again. Do we need two journalists who have been preparing for months, I'm guessing, sitting there asking questions of candidates who aren't answering the questions? What is the purpose of the person moderating this forum if we or, don't answer their questions? Or or, or becoming the, the second and third debater. In, in effect, what we need is a timekeeper or somebody who works a soundboard to say, all right, your three minutes are up. Your mic is off, and now you get to go. Or well, just keep the mics on and let them free for all it for an hour. Wasn't that the format of the Lincoln Douglas debates? I wasn't there. Ask Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no right. Well, look, look here, you got six percent that's that's undecided. That's that's what I'm hearing. Uh -huh. So did did this move the needle for those six percent? This debate. Well, we don't. I, no, I, but I don't know. If, if people are voting strictly on style, maybe. But we don't know anything about Kamala Harris's policies. We who know about Trump's policies because he's president. Style? I, think, I don't think Trump gained any voters because of his style. I don't, I don't know if Kamala lost any voters. Biden lost all of his voters because of his style. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you yes. know, so, and, and there was no substance. So that was not in play. I wanted to know Kamala is saying that she's a different candidate now than she was in 2019 mm -hmm. when she didn't get any delegates. Well, all right. Where were those questions? They just weren't there. You know, no, 2019, you, you well, were defund the police and you were all this stuff. And now you're saying you're not. What happened? And there, in the, in the defense of the moderators, they did ask her one question about a policy change she had, and she completely didn't answer it. She took that question, and then she went entirely different direction. Similarly, I think early on there was a question, of the, the old question, are Americans better off now than they were four years ago? There was a question in that vein. It wasn't exactly worded like that. And again, didn't answer the question, went in an entirely different direction with the answer. 
You so, got, again, why are we having moderators ask questions? We well, don't need them. You, you got your speech writers for these candidates, and they come up with these awesome one-liners that they ha- have to work in. So they get them in there so they can cut a cut a spot for— It all goes back to Lloyd Benson, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. The Dan Quayle, John Kennedy line. Everyone's been trying to land one of those since. Uh, well, I think the person that's done it since then, the best, is probably Trump. Like well, when when you do nothing but throw lines out, one of them's going to land. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, he's got some classics. If you if you swing for home runs on every swing, you'll strike out a lot, but you will hit some home runs, right? All right. Should there be a second debate? Not like well, yes. Not not will there be? Should there be? Should there be? Yes. I think there should be a first press conference for Harris. For Harris, you know, where she doesn't know, she can't be prepared for. What's coming? The thing about a debate is you get what maybe, maybe ten questions, twenty questions, which you don't have to answer. Yeah. So if in, in, in a real press conference, remember the old Dan Rather days of yeah. a press conference where you ask the question, you don't get the answer, and you say, "Excuse me, sir, but but I asked this," and you keep going and the, going and the going. George Bush uh, forty one press conferences. Yeah, right? and I don't know what happened to those, um, but the the voters have a right to know where people stand. And we're just not getting that. And if the debate isn't going to provide that, I don't know, maybe it's good for advertisers, but it's frustrating. But if everybody's everybody's mind is made up with the exception of that, I think, Matt, you said 6%, then maybe the candidates don't have to answer questions. Could be. Because there's no real demand for an answer to a question if everybody's already got their mind made up. We're we're getting close, and I assume everybody's talking about getting the turnout. Turn out, turn out, turn out, turn out for Pennsylvania for your swing states. So at, at eleven o'clock, right after everything shuts down, Taylor Swift endorses Kamala Harris. That was a coincidence. Rigged, set Not, up. Oh yeah, of course it was choreographed. Well, I don't rigged. I mean, you can endorse whoever you want. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean abs- for the eleven o'clock, right after the debate is over. Oh yeah, that's absolutely coordinated, staged. Absolutely. Will it matter? Does it matter to you? I've I've Doesn't matter never me, no. voted in my life based on what entertainer I like, who that, they think that I should vote for. It doesn't matter to me, but she has two hundred and eighty million followers on Instagram or whatever, uh, and she's driving registration. And there, there's the key, Matt, and that is: Will she get people to register to vote? who are big Taylor Swift fans who might vote the way she's going to vote. And there's, there's so. the difference. Of course. Bill of mentioned course that yesterday. She, will. she could move the needle just enough in some swing states. Well, you know, Biden wasn't real popular with the youth vote. And Taylor Swift probably is more persuasive than he is. You think? I think a little bit. I think so, yeah. Yeah. John? And football people. I have a hard time wrapping my head around why anybody would be persuaded by an entertainer. Mm-hmm. Um, as someone in the entertainment business, this comes up periodically. I said, I don't, don't listen to me. I don't, <laughs> you know, cast your own vote. It's not a, um, but will it, I guess. Uh, but the issue is, will it make a difference in those three counties in Wisconsin that matter and the one county in Georgia that matters? Because, if all of the Taylor Swift fans in California doesn't vote for matter. Harris, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, uh, it, or, for that matter, all the Taylor Swift fans in West Virginia, not that there aren't a lot of them, but it still won't matter. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it is such a narrow, what, maybe 600,000 votes in this country actually will determine the, the election, if that, right, uh, split one way or the other. I think it's le- it might be less than that. What was it? At the two thousand, it was seven votes. That was the difference in Cal- in uh, in Florida. Florida. So it, it's we have been razor margins uh, for since two Clinton decades. Gore. Yeah. Right. Right. And because I think ultimately people vote. We've talked about it in this show. People vote for the right hand side of the ballot. Is it a D or an R? Or a Swifty. The well, Swifty. The there you go. Vote. That's the new party. The Swifties. Well, <laughs> you know, she could drive volunteers to to the presidential campaign. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't under I wouldn't underestimate her influence the, and the, her ability the, to the add something. To influence the is in registration. It's in voter. There are no Swifty fans who are going to vote for Trump who suddenly go, "I'm not going to vote for Trump because Taylor told me I have to vote for 
for Harris. That's not going to happen. Where where it is is in people who haven't registered to vote or maybe register but don't vote. It is the key is in those folks then voting for Harris from well, the, from the swift endorsement. And you know if you can get young people involved, I don't, irrespective of which side they vote for, I I, I think that's. That's a wonderful thing. In fact, tipping my hand, what we'll talk about in my turn tomorrow on, on the Friday Five, I stumbled upon a statistic that in 2013, 85% of uh, Americans between 18 and 29, 85% were proud to be Americans. In 2023, 10 years later, that demographic it was 18% that were proud to be Americans. And so it's a stunning drop. It is a stunning drop, and that's what we will discuss tomorrow. But it's if 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 we can move that needle up a little bit and get them to be interested in voting and proud again, if it takes Taylor Swift to do it, you're okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, you know you, you, that stat jogged my memory for a moment because uh, one of my neighbor's kids graduated from college a couple of years ago. Uh, not that long ago, two, three, maybe two years, and stunned me with a comment in which he said America sucks. And I, I, what? <laughs> you know, I, I was just flabbergasted that he would he would say that. And I'm like, why would you even say something like that? And then he went through all the stuff: classroom, school shootings, right? These kids grew up with that threat that we didn't have. Right. This was something that was prevalent in his mind as a kid growing up, going through public school in an era where these things were happening more and more. Kids grew up today being told that the climate has changed to the point where a couple of years from now, they're all going to incinerate. There'll be no water to drink. There'll be no land to farm. And they're all going to burn up or get blown away in a hurricane because climate change is what they're told about all the way, all throughout their their time in school right the the earth is going to end because your parents drove cars and turned up their ac so there's no world for you when you're 60 uh social security is going to run out in 10 years we're going to take this out of your check you're never going to collect it this is the belief that they have you can't for, afford a house you can't afford a house you can't make enough money to to live on to live by yourself uh, th these are the things that that they're facing. You're stu you'll never pay back your. And this kid has no student loans, by the way. But a lot of his friends do, right? And they sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars in student loans. You'll never pay that back. And if you if you are paying it back, you'll never be able to afford a house because of that. And and this is what causes someone that age to blurt out, "America sucks." But you know there. That's very disappointing. It is. It's tremendously disappointing, and I'm I'm bothered that people that age would feel that way. That's our fault. Yeah, well, the generations in front of that generation. Well, have, yes, it's our fault. I'm not sure we're thinking in the same lines, though. Probably Where probably are not. the parents to say you know, one of the one of the jobs of a parent is to tell their kids, "No, it's not that bad. Just settle down." This relax we got this well we will get you through this um even if you're faking it because that's a parent's job is to is to keep their kids hopeful uh irrespective of you know the, the kids always have a brighter future and uh, rob in years of my young adulthood mm -hmm. the threat was remember it was going to be freezing we were having we were having a new ice age that was coming, yeah, and, and we had to be a, a concerned. So you know, we also faced Social Security's nuclear possible war. bankruptcy. And there's always been that crazy guy in the corner in the cities that mm -hmm. you know the end is near. The cold, yeah, they, I, they had one of those in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So you know, it, this, there are always those people out there. They've just got a bigger voice, and and for whatever reason, parents aren't saying they're crazy anymore. Again, sorry, Ashley. Well, but it's it, not the parents. It's when you have school shootings. Is so normalized now that you don't even think twice about the next one that comes up on the news. It's just another story about a school shooting. We're not 11. We're not in the classroom. We don't know what that's like. It's true. Right? We, we haven't lived that.